Crossrc C Emo AT4, TRX4 Bronco. Which of these will prevail in a head-to-head? -head? Join me to find out. And this comes from user Johnny Boy with a conversation I had with him just the other day. Comparisons have their limitations in usefulness. These videos are intended for entertainment purposes. When I say which is best, it is definitely a personal opinion. We do have some numbers involved, which is your performance numbers, but keep in mind that bias is hard to completely erase. And although it's the same driver, same course, I'm not always gonna drive consistently. I'm still gonna make some mistakes here and there. I'll do my best always to give you a fair look at, at whatever truck I'm looking at. We are incredibly lucky these days. We have so much choice. And the models that we can choose from are just, they're diverse, they're durable, they perform really well. And for what you get, the price continues to drop. With rock crawling, there is a little oasis of calm, I find the community is a really positive one. And I really like sharing this hobby with you guys, which is good for my mental health and hopefully it's entertaining for you guys too. So join me today, we're going to look at the Cross RC Emo AT4 and the TRX4 Bronco. It's hard to believe that I've never actually given the TRX4 Bronco a proper test on my course here with the Canyon Trail wheels. I only did it with the Proline Super Swampers. So today, the Bronco gets its time in the sun. And then we're going to put it against the Emo AT4. These guys are actually really similar. Two speed, two speed. Remote locking diffs, remote locking diffs. Full light system, full light system. Portals and portals. They're a similar size. Wheelbase is pretty much the same, 313mm. Uh, they're both heavy in the hand, honestly. So overall, we have two fairly similar rigs. Let's do it. First on the new course is the Cross RC Emo AT4. We're in low range, diffs are locked, let's do it. Both being portal vehicles here, clearance won't be a big deal. I've unlocked the diffs to help steer sharply. Now we lock it again to get it off that ledge. I'll lock and unlock as we go here. We're currently locked. I'll often unlock to get it around a corner. And as soon as we have the new direction, I'll lock again. This helps me maintain the direction of the truck without losing traction. So we unlock, because I want to straighten the vehicle up here. Now that we've got the nose up, we're locked. That's one reverse. No gate touches so far. Now, of course, we're using the stock tires that came with the AT4, which are very heavy. That's gate four cleared. I'll unlock again. Bring it around. I'll lock to maintain traction through, this is a difficult little section here, through gate five. AT4 handles it, no worries. Now this is a tight little section. I've unlocked again because it's a sharp corner and we have a post in the middle there, fencing post, which the AT4 clears without a trouble. Locking again for traction as I've got a, I've got a reverse actually. So we've had two reverses just then, and we're over. Blick of throttle to get it across the obstacle. That's through gates. Oh, we didn't tighten the slipper from the other day. That's through gate six anyway, with another reverse. The slipper is a bit loose from factory, I think. Although it'll suit drivers with heavier throttle usage, but it's actually too loose for me to claw its way up here. That's gate seven cleared. Another reverse. We're unlocked, there we go. Now we can do the bonus at any time. We're gonna do it now, because that's what we're up to. Then we've just got gate eight and finish, and we're at two minutes 19. So, this thing made mincemeat of this course, even with the loose slipper. Even dropping a wheel off the side there. We haven't touched the gate, that's good. I'll take a wide arc because I can. Okay, across to eight. Oh, that slipper. This is the cause of a couple of reverses here, but even so, no dramas as it pulls itself up. Diffs are locked again, I think. The ESC in this truck is the 1060 from Hobbywing, WP1060. And the motor, 
There we go. The motor is just a five. Oh, we are unlocked. There we go. <laughs> We're across the line. 313.56. Oh, sorry. The motor is the uh, stock Cross RC 35 turn 550 that it came with. So we have the Axe 2300. We have a brushless uh, waterproof servo in the front. So fast and strong. This thing uh, outpowers the Emo AT4 by a significant margin, but it pays for it in weight. We've got metal sliders. I've got brass front and rear as well. This is, um, this is made to be a trail rig. I haven't used it for rock crawling particularly much in recent times. So it should be interesting to see just how, how we go. But you can see the difference with a powerful servo. There's um, plenty of power, plenty of speed. Let's do it. And now we're in low, there we go. Okay, so that was 313 to beat with a bunch of reverses and no gate touches. TRX4 Bronco, time starts now. The other thing that's taking weight on this thing is the uh, winch. We have a winch on the front bar, rear is unlocked. Rear, rear is locked again. And we have a WP1060 just controlling the winch, which is the ESC for the entire truck on the AT4. Now, I haven't added the Cross RC tires to my tire test yet, but the Canyon Trails from Traxxas, we know from our testing in wet and dry to be very, very good. So that's an advantage that the Bronco enjoys, but being so heavy, it's such a heavy one. We just hit a gate then. I couldn't do much about it either. Oh, hang on, there's the reverse. This is me walking and talking. I forgot about gate five. <laughs> Sorry, Bronco. She's also a little taller than the AT4, just a little, but enough that it touched the uh, overhead brick turn. Another reverse. If I had a weaker servo, I would have got bound up and that wouldn't have made it through just then. But we did it, but it's messy. Um, what can we do about this? Reverse. Another reverse. Sorry, Bronco. There we go. So the weight in this case stopped it from bouncing back off the rock when it came in then. Uh, so while weight is a disability in some cases, it definitely uh, pays to have that weight in others. Now, I can't avoid hitting that gate, I don't think. We're gonna try. There's a reverse. We're gonna... Oh, we did avoid it. How about that? That was definitely worth the extra two reverses that cost. Now I paused between reversing. That still counts as one reverse. It only counts as another one when you change wheel direction. I really like the FOC, that's field oriented control electronic system in the Hobby Wing Axe. That big heavy Bronco keeping itself upright. And we're using the same little 700 milliamp hour 3S battery in both of these trucks for the test. Ooh, that was messy. Another reverse. Now, we had more reverses as the rear locked again. More reverses with the cross, but we did have a gate touch. On my testing here, we call that five points. In competitions, it'd be almost always tw uh, 10 points. But I'm talking and driving and thinking about what I'm gonna say and where I'm gonna stand. That takes its toll on the quality of my driving. So we call it five. I've found from experience that gives us a better point of comparison. And we are carefully, carefully across the line in 317. So the timing was pretty much the same. While we have the Bronco out and on, let's move on to the six problem course and see how we go. TRX4 Bronco, problem one. First time on this course with the Traxxas Canyon Trail tires. Previous to today, this truck has only done these problems on camera with the Proline Swampers. Here's the FOC of the axe, really showing its goodness. There's such a narrow line of error here. I actually will need to crawl quite slowly with this truck 
on several parts of this test and that's okay. We're actually not out of the woods yet, now we are. I've disengaged the rear. And we'll say at this juncture, on the GT5 I'm using, I've got the, just the channel three button there. I can, when I'm driving, I can just lock and unlock the rear diff, which is really handy. Okay, on to problem two. Again, you pay for weight. This thing is heavy. We've got metal. Uh, she's a heavy beastie, this one. Oh, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> These tires really grabbed there and many trucks wouldn't have. You see the pretty Samix weights in there that they're not strictly necessary. I actually had them uh, surplus to needs from another setup I was doing some time ago, so they're in the Bronco just because they're pretty, but they look good behind these wheels, eh? Again, not necessary. You can stick any weights in here and that'd be fine. Problem two, done cleanly. Okay, now we're on to problem three, which from this angle is a big ask for the Bronco. There are two paths up here. We're gonna lock that rear again. No, unlock it. Yeah, this is the way to do it. And now we lock the rear. And it should hopefully claw its way up. The skid plate was on the rock then. Oh, look at the tire deformation in that. There we are. No, I thought we had that. No! Oh, she's heavy. This could be the heaviest crawler I have. I'll leave that footage in. That was actually quite interesting, but we're going to hopefully get it more smoothly this time. Hmm. All right. I'll leave that last footage in where we had that off. Since we've got it out, I've got brass uh, weights, I've got brass outers and brass inners. Uh, this is a silly, oh my goodness, what was I thinking? That's a uh, metal axle housing too. This thing is ridiculously heavy. Um, actually, I'll tell you what I was thinking. This is a towing, towing rig. I wanted all that extra weight down low for towing. It kind of months this thing's crawling ability, but this truck's built for a different purpose. Look how that holds on. It's gonna fall, mind you. We're gonna have to have another go at this. All right. It's interesting though, eh? Well, I think it is. I've just unlocked the rear because I wanted this to spin freely while these things dragged it around. And I've left it, uh, I left it unlocked. We may not make this, I don't think. I'll have another go. All right, now my rear is still unlocked because, well, pointlessly actually, we've locked. Skin of our teeth, that was. Problem three done, just. Right, here's our last attempt on problem four. We've had a few, and um, although we got close a few times. We're getting caught up on this ridge here. All right, this is the point to be very careful, but I think we'll make it if I give it the right input. There we go. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's four for four. All right, problem five. Again, my first time, oh wow. So that was the same as the, uh... <laughs> the same as the cross. Emo AT4, it didn't get hung up there, many trucks do. So this is my first time with the Bronco on the Canyon Trails. I'm gonna fix the camera so you can see what's going on. Uh, this is the first time with the Bronco on the Canyon Trail wheels on these problems. And problem four was a challenge, but it did it. I think it'll do five, no worries. I've gotta fix that body, it's popped out. Yeah, there we go, no trouble. That's problem five done. All right, here's the big one, problem six. 
This is the problem that makes or breaks rigs. It's getting from here over that. We're going to unlock the rear. Take a little reverse. Having trouble getting the front around there with the diffs all locked up like they are. Lockers are good for traction, but they have a negative impact on steering. Oh, there we go, there we go. I'm gonna unlock the rear. I wanna be able to drag the front around. There we go, now it's locked again. This is the only chance this car has of getting up. I don't know if it's gonna do it, but it's kind of exciting it got this far. I reckon it will do it at this point. Yes. There you go. <laughs> so the Bronco has done all six problems. Couldn't do that with the uh, Proline Super Swampers, but it did it with the Canyon Trails. They are on weighted wheels. Now the AT4 Emo is also on weighted wheels, but these guys have a very similar performance. This thing struggled a little bit more than the AT4, but it does also have extra weight. We've got quite a lot of extra weight in here. Even the axle housings are metal. That's because I've set this thing up to be a uh, towing machine on the trails. It's all that extra weight I've added really uh, detracts from its crawling ability, I think. But uh, tires, tires and line choice are pretty big. Now my line choice is pretty consistent because it's the same driver, same experience, same truck, same radio, GT5 for both. The geometry of the rigs is a little different, but even with all the extra weight, the Bronco managed to pull off all six problems. It felt they were pretty similar. It was 313 versus 317, so the timing was similar. They're both brilliant trucks. Which one should you buy? If you want access to an enormous aftermarket, the T-Rex 4 has that covered, but the Emo AT4 I think is gonna be with us for a while. Uh, it is a very, very good truck. I would say, personally, if I was only going to buy one, in this case, ooh, I'd be buying on price. They're that similar. I haven't tested the AT4 over the long term yet. This is four years old. I bought it near when it first came out, and it has had hours upon hours upon hours on the rocks, on the trails. It's taken so many tumbles. I removed the mirrors a long time ago so that it would slip through stuff. Um, it just keeps going and going and going, and the uh, rock lights are awesome as well. The AT4 I suspect won't be quite as durable, but my initial experience with it so far is that it has really stood up to it. I think long term it's going to be quite a good rig, uh, but they're both very good. We're living in a golden age for rock crawling I think at the moment. Things are uh, available, they're getting cheaper all the time. And these are both really, really good rigs. Thank you so much for joining me. Throw me a like if this was an interesting comparison and I will see you next time on RCTNT. Now, if you want to see the full review I did of the Emo AT4, you can find that here. Uh, that has all the details about this very interesting rig, and I very much like it. If you'd like to see how the TRX4 Bronco has done in the past, check out my rig versus rig uh, playlist. That is here now, and this shows the uh, Bronco going against a bunch of different trucks, but it always is on the uh, Proline Swampers. So the Canyon Trails really woke this thing up, and so rubber matters. Who knew?